Good morning. Well, then, well, before you use the water, the, the pot maybe you should put some more water in. Okay. I think you used a bunch yesterday. It's still a little bit left, but I'll add more. You want coffee? I'm coming to my daughter.
Okay. Zev, welcome. Thank you. Nice to have you back. <clears throat> We're going to get started in another few minutes at 8.30. Uh, he was able to hear me, that's a good sign, right? Yep. Today is what, the 23rd? 22nd. 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 You know, the, the uh, calendar thing on my watch broke. When I brought it in, we're fixing it, you know? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Steve. You all uh, ready for the hurricane there? It's passing. It's not going to be a hurricane here. It's downgraded to a tropical storm and it's heading 80 miles east of Long Island. Oh, that's um, what is that? It's been downgraded to a tropical storm and it's going to be how many miles east of Long Island? 80 miles east of Long Island. East of Long Island. So it's just going to be a lot of rain. All right. Okay. All right. Well, that I'm sure, not that people enjoy the rain, but nevertheless, it makes it a lot easier than. We can't get a lot of rain. Here. It just went below 75, so then it becomes a tropical storm. Yeah. The wind is very saturated, so we be able to get rain. It's gonna. <laughs> well, okay. Right, I'm going to start us on the uh, on the sponsors, and then we'll uh, get into the DAF. It's a long DAF today. We'll try to move along uh, precipitously. Okay, Year of Learning by Sue and Arne Garlick, memory of Malka Perlman and Philip Mann, and Yisrael David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Beryl Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Yosef Meyer Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Henya Rivka Pro Rosner, Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsch, and in memory of family murdered in the Holocaust, Arav Tzvi Hirsch Ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bat Ephraim, Yisrael David Ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Bad Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam Bad Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Pesel Bad Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yako Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, shall share her children and grandchildren in memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Yisrael Ben Harav Akiva, Marsha Fedebush and family, in memory of her husband, Dr. Uriel Paul Fedebush, Oyel Pinchas ben Arav Shimon, Sharon and Fred Liska, their family and many friends, in memory of her dear mom, Harriet Friedman, Edelbas Yaakov, Leslie and Gail Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sedell, Irving and Pearl Kaplan, friends of Avi Gidler, Avra Mayer ben Shimon, and Martha Gidler, Charna Bat Yeshaya, children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren of Toby Paris. Sarah Tova, Bad Yisrael Dov, in her memory. Friends of Malka Levy, Bad Yosef. 
friends of Joe Wolf, Yosef Ben Chaim, Charlie Gelfenstein and Sam Levine, in memory of Ramona Levine, Rachel Mata Bat Asher. We have a month of learning by Marsha Fedebush in memory of her husband, Oyel Pinchas Ben Arav Shimon, by Gary and Marsha Schrager, in memory of his father, David Ben Yosef, and his mother, Freda Bat Hendel, by Dov Budlander, in memory of his parents, Tzvi Ben Yaakov Yitzchak and Bela Drasha Bat Harav Dober, and his memory of his in laws, Yehuda Tzvi Ben David Nachum and Alta Chaya Bat Avram Yosef, by Mel and Haran Haller, in memory of his father, Avram Ben Zev. We have, um, we said today is the 22nd, right? So that's it for today then. Shamas have an Aliyah, thank you for your the Yeshua Shamatliyah, the Hobane Israel, a good good bench here. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're actually starting today on Mem Hey Amud Bey's the very last line. Okay, so that's where we're picking up uh, today. Remember, we've gotten into a long discussion about the lulav being seven days, sukkah being seven days, one day, back and forth. Okay, that was the, and the Gemara ended with a discussion on the fact where it said there, Ma Rav Yosef, Nakit Rabba Barbara Khana, Biadcha, take that of the view of Rabba Barbar Khana, which meant the accept the view, the explanation of Rabbi Yochanan, in that case, the Kulu Amorai Kame Kivate Basuka, that all of the rabbis, the colleagues, basically, right, accept that the view, right? They agree with Rabbi Barbar Khana in terms of the view of Rabbi Yochan. However, as we see, that's not the case. Not everybody accepts it. And that's where the Gemara is gonna pick up. Okay, Metive. All right, now we can go to today's town. All right, Mem Vav Amurei. Aleph, what's the challenge? Ha'oseh lulav la'atzmo, Omer Baruch Shechianu V'Kimanu V'Giyanu L'Zman Hazeh. So one who prepares the lulav, in other words, takes the Arba Ba'inim, okay, or at least the three, and binds them together, is apparently supposed to say a blessing, okay? Now, that would be when? Before the start of the holiday. But you would only say that blessing theoretically one time. Because theoretically, all you'd have to do is bind it once. That should be good for all the holiday, right? So keeping that in mind, the Gemara then, however, continues and tells us, not lo, but seitbo, if we then grabbed his lulav, his arbuminim, to satisfy the obligation, he says a different blessing. Baruch Hashem Kitshenu B'Mitzvotav V'Tzivanu Al Mitilat Lulav. So that blessing, that particular blessing, how often would we say it? Would we say it just once? The same way we say the blessing when we prepared it, excuse me, or would we say it every single day? To me, Leonor. I didn't hear you. Harvey, you all right? Okay. You're muted, Harvey. Okay. Yes, I'm okay. Thank you. All right. Good. Okay. So, or would we say that blessing every single day, each time we take the lulav in the morning to say the, to be yodse? Okay. So now we can better understand what the whole discussion is going to be about. If I have an example of one occasion where I only say the Lula blessing once, maybe that would be true, the same thing. Since I could argue 
Number one, the first day I say, take the Luvan Esrog, first day of Yontif is a Doraita. I fulfill that. The rest of the week, it may be only the Rabbanan. So maybe I don't have to say the blessing each and every day. Or maybe I do, even though it's uh, the Rabbanan. Okay, so now we're putting it in a perspective. Let's go on now. The Afa Pisha Berech Alav Yom Rishon. Here is the Gemara is giving us an answer to that question that we just asked. Even though we said it the first day, which remember we said was Deoraita, Chozer Umavarech Kol Shiva. We come back and say it then every single day. So even though it's a Durabanan, according to some of the other days, I still say the blessing all seven days. Now, of course, the question is gonna be then Shabbos, right? We all had that whole discussion already in the Gemara, what did they do? Okay, all right, so going on now. Ha'oseh sukkah la'atzmo omer, one who is uh, getting his sukkah ready, right? And preparing it for the holiday. What would that mean? Theoretically, I thought it might mean when you're putting the stach on your sukkah. Okay? Since that's an ikar, right? What does he say? Baruch shechianu v'kiemanu v'kui. Right? So it's to say this as blessing for shechianu. Nichnas ba, when he goes in to sit in the sukkah, right? To fulfill the mitzvah. Omer asher kitshenu b'mitzvotev v'tzivanu leishev basuka says that blessing. Okay. Now, do we have the same problem with sukkah that we just raised with lulav? Yes. Okay. We have said if when we prepare it, we just say it once. Okay. On the other hand, I could argue, what does my pasuk say? Basuka teshvu. Shivat Yamin. That would seem to tell me that with regarding to the sukkah, it's a deoraita every single day, which would seem to imply that I would need to say the blessing of Lesheba sukkah every single day. Okay. Let's see if the Gemara is going to tell us. The Kevan Shebeirach Yom Rishon Shuveno Beirach. And here it seems to say, this challenge, that once he said it on the first day, right, he doesn't have to say the blessing any other days, despite the fact of what I just quoted in the passage. Therefore, kasha lulav alula, kasha suka asuka. I have a problem then from what appears to be what Rabbi Yochanan said in one case and another case on the lulav. I have a problem again with regards to sukkah and what I seem to be saying Rabbi Yochanan said in one case in another case. So the Gemari now comes back. Bishlem alulav alulav lo kasha. I can maybe say that regards to lulav, it's not problematic. Kan bizman she beit hamikdash kayam. Kan bizman she ein beit hamikdash kayam. Okay, maybe that's the case with lulav. That in the time of the base of Mikdash, when it's there, if I live in Jerusalem and I go to the base of Mikdash, I would bench Lulav and Esrog every single day. But if there's no base of Mikdash and I live in the Gvulin, okay, maybe I only say it that first day, Doraita, and the other days I won't. Okay. However, what happens? Okay. Ela suka, but rather with suka, asuka kasha. But then I still have a problem with the example of the suka. Tanaihi, says the Gemara. And that is a machloka tanai. Right? What happens? Right? Says the Gemara. Titania, as taught in the bright. Okay, and I'm going to try to make a a comparison, okay? Filin, according to Rebbe, every time one puts on the tefillin, 
one has to say the blessing again. But the sages say, they argue you only say the blessing once, first time you put it on in the morning. And therefore the implication would be very quickly that if one had to remove that film to go to the she routine, the Beit Kisei, when they came back, according to Chachamim, you would not have to say the blessing again. According to Rebbe, you'd put the filin on again and have to say the blessing again. Okay? Itma. And so the Gemara now tells us. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Okay. Absolutely, Sid. Rashi's filin, they were being the the guy's going to take off. Rashi's filling, of course. You know, they're going to put on a ring of thumbs and put on a bracha again. I don't believe I don't believe that they say a bracha again. Yeah. Okay, what it's the implication is if I didn't say that according to the this first command of Rebbe, I'm taking it off. That's where I'm filling. I'm according I'm to, right, it. according to Rebbe's view, I would have to you would have to say again. Okay? According to Rebbe's view, according to the Chachamim. No. Okay. I know the halacha, we don't make a bracha again on Right. And there are many shukas also, for example, the Babich only makes one bracha. That's because I believe, I don't know for sure, I believe they follow the minhag of the Svardim that also only say one bracha. For both. For, for both, Shabbat. right, for both. Right. I'm aware of that. That's okay. What I'm asking. That's what I think that they tend to follow more that practice. Okay. All right. Anyway, what happens? Itma Abaye Right? It was said about this. Abai said as follows. Rebbe. According to Abai, the law is like Rebbe. The Rabba Amar and Rabba says Rabbanan, that the law is like the rabbi. Okay. <clears throat> so that is a classical, right? Machlokatani. Amar Rav Mary, Bara de and Rav Mary who is the son of the daughter of Shmuel. Okay. Chazina le the Rabba. I happened to see Rabba. The lo avid kishmate. And he did not follow what he taught. Okay. Namely, Ella Makdin Vakai. He got up early and then went. Vaayel the Beit Hakise. And went to the Beit Kise. Venafik, he came out, Umashi Yade, and washed his hands, Umanach Tfilinum Evarech. After he washed his hands, he put on his Tfilin and said the blessing. Vachi Itztarich, Zimna Achrina, and if he needed another time to go to the Beit Hakise, Ayil, the Beit Hakise, he went to the Beit Hakise, Venafik, and he went out. Umasha Yade and washed his hands again. Umanach Tfilin Mivarech. And then he put on the Tfilin again. Remember, they wore that Tfilin the entire day, right? And then he said the blessing again. So this was his testimony. And remember, we always say, what's the importance of a Maaseh when the Gemara brings it to try to tell you what the actual Proof of the halacha is. So by telling us he saw Rava follow, it's clearly that Rava wasn't following okay, the rabbi's view, but following Rebbe's view. So the Gemara continues. Va'anan nami Rebbe avdinan. And we also follow the practice of Rebbe, right? kol <coughs> shiva. And we say the blessing on the lulav. The I'm, I'm sorry, on the sukkah, each seven of the seven days. Okay. Now, Amar Mar Zutra. This is Madru Zutra. Chazina le le rav papi. The kol emat de manach tefillin. Again, trying to make the comparison. Okay, that I saw rav papi. Every time he would put on tefillin. Mevarech. Okay, he would... Say the blessing. Rabbanan de Be Rav Ashi, and those students in the academy of Rav Ashi, call Emat de Misham Shei Baho Mevarche. 
every time they touched the tefillin, okay, they would say the bracha. Okay, a Koran had an interesting note, just as a quick aside, trying to point out on what occasion the, the idea was that they didn't want to forget the importance of the mitzvah. So every so often they would touch it. Okay, that's also why it's sometimes we have people who during the recitation of Kriyat Shema touch the tefillin, okay, both in the first and the second paragraphs. Okay, all right. So what happens? Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Shmuel. We now get to a... Right, not everybody does. Right, okay. Okay. But notice if they do, that doesn't mean that they recite the blessing again. Because you're not going to interrupt Kriyachma. Okay? All right. So now a new piece. Amar Rav Yehuda Amar Shmuel. Okay? Remember, we tried to use tefillin as a paradigm for sukkah. Okay? Now we're still coming back to the issue of lulav. Mitzvat lulav called shiva'a, according to Rav Yehuda in the name of Shmuel. Okay? Varab Yeshua ben Levi Amar, Yom Rishon. Mitzvat lulav, mikan ve'elech mitzvat zukini. That the first day it's deoraita, the other days it's simply derabanan. Now, what's my question? Can you say that therefore I have to say the blessing if it's quote in quotes only a mitzvah derabanan the other day, right? Rabbi Yitzchak Amar, he gives another example. Kol Yoma Mitzvat Zakenim Vaafilu Yom Rishon. He says it's only a mitzvah the Rabbanan every day of Sukkot, even the first day. Wait a second, says the Gemara. Vahakaimalan the Yom Rishon deoraita, but we hold that the first day is a Torah mandated, right? Ema, therefore I, I will amend his the statement and say as follows, bar miyom rishon, with the exception of the first day, Rav Yitzchak statement. So if I'm correcting Rav Yitzchak's statement, what is the, my result? My result is, ihachi hainu de Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. If that's the case, then Rav Yitzchak is saying the exact same thing as what Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi said. That Yom Rishon Mitzvat Lulav Mikan Ve'elech Mitzvat Zakeni, right? So what happens? Ema, therefore I would say, right? V'chena Ma Rabit, right? Okay, now what happens? Va'af Rav says the Gemara, and even Rav savars of the opinion, Kol Shiva Mitzvat Lulav, that we say the blessing each day, right? The Amar Rabbi Chia Bar Ashi Amar Rav, that he said in the Rav Chia Bar Ashi in the name of Rav, what? Hamadlik Ner Shel Chanukah, Srich Levarech, right? That one who lights Chanukah candles says a blessing each day. Now, why is that important? Because the mitzvah of lighting Chanukah candles is a the Rabbanan. Yet we say the mitzvah each day. So even if you were to say and argue that the mitzvah of lulav is a derabbanan for the other six days and not just aside from the first, I could still argue that I have to say the bracha on it, right? So now, Rabbi Yirmiya Amar, he says, Haro'en ne'er shachanukah, tzrich levarech. One who sees the Hanukkah has to say a blessing. My Mavarech, what does he bless? Amar Rav Yehuda Rom Rishon on the first day. Hamadlik Mavarech Shalosh, right? The one who lights the candle says three blessings. Haro'e Mavarech Shtayim. And one who sees says two blessings. Mikan Ve'elech, from then on. Madlik mevarech shtayim, the one who lights the candle says two blessings. V'ro'e mevarech echat, and the one who sees says one blessing. Okay? 
Do we do that today? That the person who sees candles says a blessing? Some may do. I don't know if that's generally the custom. Okay. Mavarech. What does he say? Baruch Hashem Kitshanu B'Mitzvotav V'Tzivanu L'Hadlik Ne'er Shel Chanukah. There we have the fair statement that it says commanded us. Okay, so it's a derabanan, but we're still commanded to say it and say a blessing. Mara says, Vehechan Tzivanu. On what's the basis that we say commanded us? Milo Tasur. Maybe we base it on the fact that we have a blessing, a statement that says uh, basically, right? Lo tasur, that's only part of the uh, text, right? Uh, you shall not deviate from the word that they, the rabbis, relate to you. Okay, that's uh, art scroll note I number 20. What? I saw that every time the rabbanam ordered something, Say that's that's the point. That's what they're saying. It's a rabbanan, but yes. based on the Torah's mandate in Dvarim chapter 17, verse 11. If I, okay. All right. All right. All right. So, real quick, I could say. Oh, open right to it. Okay. Al piha Torah ashe yerucha, the al hamishpat ashe yomru lacha, taase, the tasur min hadavar ashe yagidu lacha yamin usmo. That's the possible. All right. Same, basically. All right. According to the teaching that they will teach you, and according to the judgment they will say to you, shall you do. You shall not deviate from the word. That they will teach you right or left. Okay, so saying th that pasuk, okay, that's what the suggestion is the basis that we say a, that it's the Rabbanan, but we still say a bracha for it, right? So what happens? Okay, therefore, um, okay, so therefore, that's the point. The Rav Nachman wants to give a different suggestion for the basis, right? For Rav Nachman by Yitzchak come out, excuse me, Sha'al Avicha V'yaget. Just citing a different pasuk, ask your father and he will relate to you, your elders and they will tell you. Okay? So that's always my mima'et. So then the Gemara asks, so what's the bracha that we drop? Because it said, First day is three, second day is two. Zman, we drop the Shechianu blessing. Okay. Ema, mima eight nes. I might have thought, I might say that one should eliminate the miracle blessing. Right? And Kumara answers, nes kol yoma ite. That the fact that there was, that the oil remained and continued. That was a miracle on a daily basis, and therefore we do still include it. All right. Now, Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak, matne la beheje. Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak didn't go through this whole, I'll say, geshichta of trying to come up. He just taught it directly. And how did he do it? Amar Rav, says Rav, kol shiva mitzvot lula, namely all seven days, one fulfills the mitzvah of Lula. You make the bracha on the mitzvah. Every day you make the bracha on the Lula. Tanu Rabbanu, a new brighter. Ha'oseh sukkah la'atzmo. We said that if one was making a sukkah for himself. Omer, he says, Baruch shechianu v'chum. Nechnas le'sheva. He went to sit inside it. Right? What happens? Baruch Hashem Kitshanu Vichu. Haita Asuya Vaomedet. Let's say the sukkah was already standing. Okay. Well, what happens? Im Yechol Lechadesh Ba Davar Mivarech. 
if he can do something, add a little extra schach, whatever it is, right? Okay, then he still would say the blessing. Im lav, if not, when he goes in, he would say to both of them. Now, Amar Rav Ashi, this is Shechianu. No, first time. Okay? Now, because we would have said that blessing of making it only one time. Chazina Leila Rav Kahana. So now what happens? Mar again, Rav Ashi says, well, how about a masa? Chazina Leila Rav Kahana. The Ka'amar Laho Lekuhu Akasa de Kedusha. He says, I saw Rav Kahana, he would recite a whole, I'm going to say, litany of blessings at one time when he made Kiddush. Okay? Tanu Rabbanim. But a bright that teaches. Ayulifanav mitzvot harbe. If one has multiple blessings, Omer, Baruch Asher Kitshanabu mitzvotav, Vitzivanu al ha mitzvot. That he could say one collective blessing. Rabbi Yehuda Omer says, Rabbi Yehuda, Mavarech ako echat ve echat bifne atzma. The one which say each individual blessing. Okay? Ama Rabbi Zera, Vitema Rav Khanina Bar Papa, Hilchata Karabi Yehuda. But the law is like Rabbi Yehuda, okay? We say individual blessings. Just think of Havdala, is the best example that came to my mind. Okay, we say a blessing for each item. We don't say on the mitzvahs. On all on the mitzvahs, or we don't just simply say the Havdala blessing at the end, okay? As a as a uh, collective, right? okay. What happens? Vama Rabbi Zera v'itema Rav Chanina Bar Papa. My time the Rabbi Yehuda. So what was Rabbi Yehuda's reasoning? Echtiv Baruch Hashem Yom Yom. We say praise praise be Hashem each day. V'chi bayom mevarchin oto uvalayla ein mevarchin oto. We only bless him in the day and not at night. It says, Each day, we should say uh, in a, a group, an assortment of blessings. There's a custom from some people to say 100 blessings each day. That's uh, mentioned in Gemara Brachos. Achanami here too. Each thing. You recite for him sorts of blessings. Okay. Va'ama Rabbi Zera, Vitema Rabbi Chanina Bar Papa. Others say it was Rabbi Chanina Bar Papa. Bo'ura'e shalok midat ha-Kadosh Baruch Hu. Midat basar v'dam. That the aspect of Hashem is not like a common person. Right? Where does this come in? We're going to see it in a moment. Basar v'dam. Clay Rekan for a normal person. Okay, if they are, uh, I don't really like the word empty, but if they are not uh, an empty vessel, right? an empty vessel, if they, all right, what happens, right? Says the Gemara as we go on to Memvav, right? Machzik, all right? An empty vessel can retain things. Melo, male, a full vessel, a no machzi, cannot retain things. That's why I use the word retain, right? Aval midat kadosh baruch malay machzi, but the attribute of the kadosh baruch which he has endowed people, the capability of those who have uh, learned. Okay, if they've learned. Machzik, they're able to retain more. Reikan, but if they have not retained any learning, a no machzik. Okay, they don't have the willingness or the desire or the ability to learn, to retain. Shnemar, as based on the Pasik, Vaya im Shamoa Tishma. If you've heard, 
right? Or learned, you'll hear or you will learn the Gomer. Im Shamoa, if you heard, in other words, if you've listened, Tishma, you'll listen to more, right? Ve'im lav, lo Tishma. And if not, you won't listen to more. Davar acher, another way of explaining the same thing. Im shamoa biyashan. If you learned old material and you've reviewed it, tishma, you'll learn b'chadash, be able to learn new material. Ve'im yifne levavcha. But if your heart is uh, such that it's uh, not willing to... Uh, Give that attention. No, it's not. I don't want to use the word. The old stuff. Okay. In other words, if you're not willing to to uh, review and continue, shuv lo tishma, then you will not have the opportunity to listen and gain from the new stuff. Okay. Now we're back to our uh, end of our Mishnah, and remember, the end of the Mishnah said at the end of the holiday, they would loosen the binding of the arba, uh, of the three meaning, okay? And having do so, maybe remove the lulav, and then they would be able to eat the esrogi, okay? And we saw there was a machloket, whether that could be done on the seventh day itself, or it had to wait till the eighth day, okay? Now, let's see what happens. Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Etrog b'shvi'i asur, says Rabbi Yochanan. Eating the etrog on the seventh day is forbidden. B'shmini mutar. On the eighth day, okay, shmini atzeret, if you want to eat your etrog, okay, that's welcome, you're welcome to. All right. Sukkah afilu b'shmini asura. But the sukkah, to, to take it apart or to use any of the wood for other purposes, okay? That is completely forbidden, okay? Now, what happens? V'reish lakishamar etrog afilu b'shvi'i nami muta. According to Reish Lakish, it would be permissible to eat the etrog on the seventh day, and I'm going to put in later in the day. For a particular reason, right? But my kamiflagi, miflagi. What are they arguing about? Mar savar lemitzvata at kitzaye. One master, and I'm going to suggest that it's uh, okay in a moment. That it, it is set aside particularly for the mitzvah. Umar savar lekuliyoma it kitzaye. And the other master holds that it's set aside for the entire day. So Reish Lakish holds, once it's set aside for the mitzvah and you've done the mitzvah, you can eat the etro. Reish Rabbi Yochanan disagrees. And he argues, no, once it's been set aside to use as the mitzvah for that day, it has sanctity the entire day and you can't eat it till the next day, right? A so now the back and forth. Rav, Reish Lakish challenges Rabbi Yochanan. A tivei Reish Lakish le Rabbi Yochanan. Miyad tinokot, shumtin et lulavehim, vochlin achdrogehim. Our Mishnah particularly taught that the hands, right, from the children you could remove or loosen the lulav, in other words, unbind it, and eat the etrog. My love, who hadin legdolim, isn't the same law applicable for adults? No. Okay. Uh, Rabbi Yochanan argues back, no. Tinokot dafk. No, that was only regards to children. Ika da amre. And there are those who phrase it in the following way. That it was Rabbi Yochanan who challenged Reish Lakish and said to him, Okay, 
okay, from the children, one could loosen the lula, the uh, three menim, remove the lulav, and eat the etrog. Tinakot en gdolim lo. Children, yes. Adults, no. Hu hadin da afilu gdolim. We may have thought that the same thing was logical and reasonable for adults. Vahai did katani tinakot. And the fact that our Mishnah referred specifically, I'm saying, to children, or Milta Katani, they were teaching what was the common practice, what was going on. That's what our Mishnah was teaching. They were, they were tying the, the S rope to the Lula I, I don't think they tied it to. Why would you have to untie the, uh, the Lula to eat the S rope? Because it implication would be it's all fin you've fulfilled the mitzvah of the arbamini. So if I finished all the mitzvah of arbamini, I can unbind it, right? I'm going to use my lulav for some other reason, like uh, uh, Pesach. All right, Pesach, right? Okay, and therefore I could then eat the lulav. Why? Because I eat the etron. Because for the kids, that was a, apparently a means of entertainment. Okay. All right. Anyway, what happens? Amarle Rab Papa La Abai. The Rabbi Yochanan, Maishna Suka. Maishna Etro. So he, he's asking Abai, what was uh, the difference? What was so unique about the Sukkah then? What was so unique about the Etro? Amarle telling him as follows. In other words, why this issue for Rabbi Yochanan that he said you had to wait till the eighth day to eat the etro? And likewise, okay, there was an issue with Sukkah. Amarle Sukkah, the Chazya Labain Hashmasho. It means that the Sukkah has to be, I'm going to use the word available and suitable for use if you have, a me have to have a meal late in the day before it gets dark. In other words, all right, that's the point. The e it rame le suudata by metav begova umichal ba begova. Because if it occurs that he has a meal, right, at uh, sunset, so to speak, and it's not yet dark, the yontif seventh day hasn't ended yet, right? So the exactly, he has to sit in the sukkah and eat in the sukkah. Namely, it katsai the bain hamashmashon. Therefore, it's set aside even for that time of a sundown, sunset. Okay, umigo de it katsai the bain hashmashon. It katsai the kule yoma deshmini. And since it's set aside for that sunset, sundown period. Therefore, it is set aside for the entire eighth day. Etro, whereas the etro, delo chazi labain hashmashon, which is not suitable to be used at the sundown, lo it could say labain hashmashon. It's not set aside for sundown period. Velo it could say lekule yoma, and therefore it's not set aside as for the entire day. Okay. Now, what happens? And the other, the implication would be once you use it for the Arba Menium on the seventh day, it's done with. You could eat it on the And then day. you could eat it. And you right? eat it on After. Right? You could theoretically not, according to Rabbi Yochanan, you couldn't eat it on the seventh day. You'd have to wait till the eighth day, but according to Reish Lakish, you could eat it on the seventh day, right? The Levi Amar, the Levi says, Etro gafilu b'shmini asur. He says, Levi, that even on the eighth day, you can't eat the Etro. Va'avua de Shmuel Amar, and Shmuel's father says, Etrog b'shvi'i asur. Etrog on the seventh day is forbidden. B'shmini mutar. On the eighth day, it's permitted. What happens, however, says the Gemara? 
קם אבוה דשמואל בשיטת הידה לוי. However, אבוה דשמואל, שמואל's father changed his mind, he recanted, and then accepted the view of לוי. קם רבי זרה בשיטת אבוה דשמואל. But רבי זרה, however, had accepted the view of שמואל. Okay? דאמה רבי זרה, as he says, אתרוג שנפסלה אסור לאוכלה כל שבעה. That an etrog that had become pasul cannot be eaten during the seven days. Okay, but it could be eaten then on the eighth. Okay, so you have a, an etrog. So yeah, two etrogs. Yeah. One you're using. Yeah. You just it somehow got the second etrog and you put it aside. Right. So theoretically, your question is if I use etrog A to bench with, could I eat etrog B? Theoretically, the answer would be yes. Let's see what the Gemara says, right? Okay. Ama Rabbi Zera says Rabbi Zera. Okay. Rabbi Zera, however, is going to give us another new thought. Lo likne inish oshana liyanuka biyom tavakam. One should not a transfer possession, I'm going to use that word, okay, of a hoshana, in other words, the three meaning together, to a child on the first day of the holiday, okay? A child can acquire, right? My Tama, what's the reasoning? The Yanuka Mikna Kani. A child does have the ability to gain possession. But I'm putting in here, aknuye lo mekane. But a child does not have the halachic the ability to transfer pos possession. Okay, veishtekach the kan nafik belulav sheino shalom. And in that case, somebody who would use that particular set of the three meaning would be using a lulav on the first day that's not his. It was a, would be a lulav gazu, and therefore he doesn't fulfill the mitzvah. It, would it make a difference for the child is his or somebody else's? Good question. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Vama Rabbi Zeru. If the child is not his, then how can he use that for them? Right? right. Awesome. If the child's his, then you could say, well, maybe we call him Asher Kana. That's, that's who it is. That's the difference. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what that looks Right, I'm right. Gonna... Okay. Okay, let's go on. Got a little bit to finish. Right? Va'ama Rabbi Zem. A person, since we mentioned dealing with kids, okay? This is a, a somebody should uh, write this up, print it up, and stick it in every class. Vama Rabbi Zera, Lo Lema Inish Lianuga. A person should not say to a child, Da Lach Midi, that I'm going to give you something, Velo Yehiv Lay, and not give it to the child. Mishum Da Ate Le Agmore Shikra. Because then you're coming to teach the child how to lie, right? Shneema, as it says, limdu l'shonam davar sheki. Okay, that they would learn, uh, right? The ability to lie. Ubeplugde the rab. Now we come back. Uplugde the rabbi Yochanan v'reish lakish. Back to that argument we had, right? The itmar about it. The following was said. If rish shiva etrogim, here you go, Ted. You talked about two. Now we're talking about seven, right? <laughs> One for each day. Okay, that's why I, I, I told you. Hold on. All right? What happened with shiva yamim? Amar Rav says Rav ko echad veechad yotze ba vochla la alter. Each one, you see, if he's got the additional etrogin, he could use it for the bracha and then eat it. 
right then and there. Why? Because he's got another one for the next day. Okay. Okay. Each day you would eat it and you could only then eat it the next day. Right? Why? Because you have to wait. What are they arguing about? It's the same concept. Is it sanctified just for the occasion or is it sanctified for the entire day? That was the right. One master thought for the sake of the mitzvah, it was set aside. And the other felt it was for the entire day that it was set aside. But Anan and we, the Ilan, so now we get to a whole brand new issue here. All right? And this is significant, right? We, he says, Va'anan, the Ilan Treyome, Echi Avdinan, that we have two days, right? At the beginning of Yontif, right? In the diaspora, right? In Bavel, right? What do we do? Okay? In other words, when can I eat my etro? Do I have to wait to the first day of Cholamoy? Right? Amar Abai, Shmini Safek Shvi'i. The eighth day is theoretically could have been the seventh day, right? If you say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or you do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, still get seven days either way, right? Asur, it's forbidden, says Abai. Shi'i, Sefek Shmini, the ninth day, okay? Which is questionably the eighth day, Gabriot, Muta. Then it would be permitted to eat the Lula, the Etro, right? Marima Amar, Mary Mar says, Afilu Shmini, Sefek Shvi'i, Muta. Even on the eighth day, Though it's questionably the seventh day, it would be permitted. Again, it had to be the same argument, whether it was done for the mitzvah for the day or done for the mitzvah the whole day or done only for that, for the saying of the, the uh, Yotze. What happens? Look at Besura Avde Kamerima. So in one community in Bavel, they followed one minha. Rav Shisha, bereid the Rav Idi, Avid Ke'abaye. And another area, they did another minha. The Hilchata Ke'abaye. And the Gemara throws in. Okay, event that. We should know that that's the law. Right? Now, as we finish up, Amar Rav Yehuda, bereid the Rav Shmuel Bar Shilat, Mishmei the Rav. Okay, we have another question. Since we asked a question of in the diaspora, we'll ask one more. Safek Shvi'i, Shvi'i Lesuka, Ushmini Lebracha. Do we say here then that in, when it's the last day and it's not sure if it's really the eighth day or the seventh day, <clears throat> is it, do we say that it's considered the seventh day and therefore we do? Uh, Act in the sukkah, ushmini, and on the eighth day, though, the bracha, that we include the bracha in the birkat hamazon, in the amida, and in the kiddush. Rabbi Yochanan Amar, shmini lazet lazet. According to Rabbi Yochanan, his argument is that it is like the eighth day, and we do both, right? So, therefore, some people eat. In the uh, in the Shmini Atzeri, okay, in the circle, Meita, but we have the following challenge. It says, "Kuli alma lo plige the Advina. Everybody is in the agreement that dwelling in the circle, okay, is appropriate on the eighth day. And forty six B four art scroll has a rather extensive note on that. Okay, in fact, it's the entire note for the page, right? Keep pleading, where do they argue? All right, 
libruche, whether we say a blessing for dwelling in the sukkah on that occasion. Laman da amar shvi'i the sukkah bruche, the one who says that for the we say the blessing nami mevarchin, and we also say a blessing for it. Laman da amar shmini leze uleze bruche lo mevarchin. And the one who says on the eighth day, right? I treated, right, that it's, uh, okay, both for sukkah and yom tov, we don't recite a blessing for dwelling in the sukkah. And that's where we'll stop right there. Okay? So if you have a sukkah tree in your backyard. Have a good day. Backyard, yeah. And before you have to pick eight esrogim, yeah. And say this one I'm going to use for the next one. And these are putting the fruit bowl on the table. You know, everybody wants and the fruit bowl, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, I know it's designated as to, for eating purposes. Yeah. You know, that's for the nice fruit bowl. I, I would sooner you personally I would sooner use the etrog and give oh, it a right, 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 etrog right. and have somebody but, make etrog liqueur yeah. from it. Right. My my wife's grandmother used to make uh, jelly. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Be good, Mom. Hey, oh, you two are rushing today. A little late. Yeah. You didn't finish yeah. down. I was about to pass over. I'm a little, a very big daft today, anyway. Ooh. Ooh. All right, take care. Go rest. Yeah, have a good day. Good, take care. Mm-hmm.